All right. So I already have your name, so you don't have to spell it and everything right. like that. Um, but if you would like to give me your title that you would like um, for me to use. Uh, my title is uh, Roberto Lope. No, let's start all of it again. B-M-E-C-R-O Project Coordinator. All right. And, you know, uh, please share with me on the, the purpose of this project. The purpose of this project is to um, continue our cleanup efforts that was started by my sister, Clyde Williams, who is now 95, and also to complete the goals that she set aside. And some of those were to erect a monument here with all of the names that we've identified um, to go on that monument. We also have a number of broken stones, or headstones, that was caused by Hurricane Irma. We had many, many trees out here uh, last year that was left over from Irma. And thanks to Keep Alachua County Beautiful, Ms. Gina Hawkins, and a number of other sponsors uh, to help us get this the way it is right now. But after Hurricane Irma, it was really unrecognizable. So the, the main goal is, goals are to erect a monument and also repair the broken stones and also try to maybe maintain it by maybe fencing it in and ensuring that it's protected because we feel right now that it is a threat. I don't know if you've heard of the um, 11 save 11 save the 11 save which means that they're trying uh, the House of Representatives and the government are trying to save all of these type of cemeteries because they are threatened you know they, they won't be maintained unless a group like ours, Bethlehem Methodist Episcopal Respiratory Cemetery Organization, come in and really try to do something. Because it's no way that I will be able to continue with this cleanup without the help of Keep Alachua County Beautiful, grants, and that sort of thing. And as you know, uh, the University of Florida, along with BMECRO, partnered um, so that we can write this grant. And I think it needs to be in by June 1st for $25,000 so we can um, work on some of the goals. So I've been here so many times now that I feel like it's home. <laughs> And I feel like everybody here are my relatives. The one thing I want to stress is that I've found a number of my relatives, and I've found other people relatives. But we want everybody in Archer and around Archer, uh, anyone over the county who think they may have someone here, to come out and just look at the names and see if you can identify anybody who may be in your family because what we're trying to do is compile the history on these people because when we put the name up on the um, monument we want to have if we can the date that they were born and the date that they died and of course we will make comments notes as to how they were associated with different family members or how they were associated uh, with Archer itself also, we have a number, I don't want to forget to mention that we do have a number of slaves here. There are people who were born in the 1820s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. My grandfather, Amos Haynes, was born in 1848 and died in 1909. So since slavery was not over until 1965, between 65 and 67, I'm assuming that a lot of these people here were slaves on some plantation nearby. 
and there was one in Archer. And also there's one up the road going to Gainesville. So that would be another interesting subject to get on and find out just where did they, um, or who they were associated with. Uh, but like I said, my main interest is to try to find and locate, well, we've already located the stones that are here, but the main goal now is to try to also locate uh, through family members and identify people who are actually out here without stones. Because I'm sure that I can think of at least three people right now, and I know that they do not have stones, but I know because of my age, I'm, seven, I'm 80 years old, and I know because of my age that they are here. I recently found my great-great-grandfather, I found a cousin out here. I didn't know where he was buried, but now I know because I checked it out with his family. So this is what we have to do. We have to talk to our families. We have to find out from them, especially the older ones, who's here. That's most important. And uh, share with me the um, importance of preserving history. Like, because you say you want to build Well, a um, you want to preserve it because you want it to go the old saying go down in history. Our children and, and our great grands and grands and children before that and after that, all of them need to know their family background. And, and through this cemetery, you can find that. You can find that. My grandparents, um, my great grandparents, my great great grandparents are here. This is all part of building that family tree that goes down into history, in the family history. Um, and I think it's especially important to uh, African Americans. This cemetery consists of African Americans mainly. I, I don't think there are any other, other than African Americans here. So to me, that is history in itself. And we need to protect this. We need to preserve it. Uh, for our children and our children's children, you know. Um, when I'm dead and gone, I would like to know that my family is still taking care of my ancestors, taking care of, of course, I won't be buried in this particular one, but taking care of me. Because there are other cemeteries around Archer, I will be buried in Shallow, at Shallow. So not just this grave, but all of them. And through the, the uh, 11 save, let we on the, I understand that we may be on that list where the government is going to get involved in helping to preserve these African American cemeteries and other old cemeteries that are abandoned. You may want to uh, check that out and see um, how that all ties in. All right. And share with me how um, the grant is coming along. Well, actually, we just started on May the 13th. Okay. On May the third, I met uh, Mr. Morris Hilton, uh, Department of Historic Preservations at the University of Florida, and brought him here for a tour. And he, out of no, I had no idea, he just said, I want to help you. That was the best news I could have heard. Then he said, I said, well, you know, we don't have the, the 501c3, we don't have the nonprofit status. Not necessarily the 501, but the nonprofit status. I say, so I don't have a way of raising the, the funds. So he said, I'll help you. He said, let's go see the city of Archer. Talk to the manager and talk to the commissioners. So on May the 13th, we approached the city commission and uh, they approved our using their name in order to apply for the grant, which is due June 1st. Now we've already started collecting and we need more of those letters of support to go to the Florida uh, Historic Preservation Resource uh, Matching Grant because it is a matching grant. And I want to say too that this will not be any cost to the city. Mr. Hilton from the University of Florida planned to completely administer, uh, be the administrator for the grant. Between he and I, the two of us, and our board, 
we will raise the $3,125 match. That's a drop in the bucket. So I think with the help of the city, the corporations, uh, businesses, and people that we know, that will be easy to do. Um, I can't thank them enough, um, especially the city. Um, Keep Alachua County beautiful, Waste Pro, all of the people who have um, really contributed to this project, Florida Concrete for fixing our road, just, just a number of organizations and people who have really stepped up to help us. And most importantly, we thank the University of Florida and the students from the fraternity and sorority um, students along with our um, African-American student group who can't come out periodically and help us with the cleanups. Back in January, we had about 100 people here just helping us. And, and I just can't, it's so many people to think. But uh, we're gonna continue with what we are doing until we get it to a place where my sister Clyde Williams will be proud. Uh, she's 95 and I just hope that she see this when it's more complete. Okay. And you all established in 1999? My sister Clyde established this organization in 1999 and they had the dedication with this sign July of 2000. And that's the sign we want to replace with the monument. But, um, you know, she could only do so much with little funds. And um, she could only do, you know, just, just things like keeping it mowed, picking up the limbs and stuff like that. But Hurricane Irma almost took us out. Okay, Is, are there any ways you all are trying to prevent, like let's say another natural disaster from... Um yeah. We did that by cutting down trees. We removed a lot of dead trees. We removed a lot of dead limbs. So yes, I still see uh, about three or four trees that may need to come down or could drop limbs, but it will be nothing like what was here. Nothing like it. Because what we've done, we've not only preserved uh, uh, the trees, you know, we've removed the dead branches and all that stuff. So we, we, we wanted to keep the trees because you can't just run around cutting down good old oak trees, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they are here, they are here. But there are a couple that I noticed today that could possibly still come down, but they may not be that hard to get someone to saw them up or get rid of them or either maybe even take down a couple of more trees. And I will be looking for a contributor for that, to take down some trees. And uh, where can people, I guess, um, write letters to you or raise the funds? Well, actually, we haven't gotten into that yet. Okay. Because, you know, you have to set up a bank account and all of that, but that's coming. You know, who knows? We're, I'm meeting with the board. We still have board members for the BMECRO. Let's make that clear, too. There's a vice president, Clara Newbin. We have a treasurer, Bertha Henderson, a secretary, Juanita McDaniel, and another member who is very active and hold a position on the board named Paul Lee. Those are the ones that I know that are still intact. Most of these people like myself are getting up in age and they can only do so much. So this is why uh, we can only do so much. And this is why we need all the help we can get from the outside. And I'm thankful that we've been getting it. But it's one thing for sure, <laughs> at my age, I definitely need the help because I cannot continue to do what I'm doing. So that's why it's so important for us to get that grant. It's so important for the volunteers to come out and help us. I want to stress that, please. Mm -hmm. And um, and share with me the different markings, like that you uh, 
uh, shared with me earlier, you said you guys put down like flags and different. Um... What we've done is gone through the, the site and identified with red markers, white markers, any kind of marker we can find to show that these particular, some of these stones, and most of them, believe it or not, need some type of repair. They've even fallen off of their base, or their leaning, whatever. And of course, we would have to go through a um, monumental company to get all of that done. But these are the kind of things that we will be discussing with the University of Florida because I don't want to jump too fast and go start doing all of this until we get it together and we, ident we say who's going to be doing what. The more that the University of Florida and the graduate students are involved too can help us with, the better. That's great. Um, you, th this was a wonderful interview. Thank um, you. Uh, those were all of my questions. They were good ones. On. So do you have any you know, final thoughts you would like to share? No, I don't. All right, thank you so much, Roberta. You're welcome.